Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and hello if you are new. A few weeks ago, I had an interview for Students Awards and I've shown you how I've done the posters in InDesign. And a lot of people asked if I could show how I did the axonometric concept development. You ask and I deliver. So if you want to see how I did these axonometric concept development diagrams, then please keep watching. Concept development diagrams are very important in your presentation boards because you can easily explain your solution to the site constraints in a simple way and it all starts with the massing in SketchUp. So this is the first massing that I've done and as you can see copied and pasted it until I have all of these four uh, diagrams or shapes and then you can change them a little bit to, to show your development. And then I'm gonna go to views and change it to ISO which means axonometric and I'm also gonna choose the style as hidden line because that gives me a white background and it's very good quality and it's easier than to select. And then I'm gonna go to export and export it as a 2D model as a JPEG and make sure that it's very high quality so you slide this left to right and you can choose high quality. So I'm gonna open this in Photoshop first on a separate document and then drag it onto my A3 sheet so that it's ready and in high quality. Close that off because we don't need it and then come here. So I'm gonna select all of the white space and delete that with magic wand tool. And so then when I stroke it, it has this black edge that's quite cool. And then I'm gonna add, also add the key which has different colors that I'm going to use for each of the forms. I'm just going to select each of these shapes and then color them with different colors. Simple as that. And here I noticed that I had a shape that I forgot to do in the first diagram. I just went to that layer and copied it and moved it down and then also colored it with a different purple and then once I'm happy with the colors you'll have something looking like this so then I'm moving on to diagram 2 and I'm coloring the entrance with red also lowering its opacity and then grouping everything into diagram 2 and here I'm also doing the courtyard with light blue for the glass and then i'm going to paint a tree using a tree brush i think it was from show it better with the color green and then i'm gonna use a clipping mask so that it's within the frame of the blue glass group it diagram two and then i'm gonna look for arrows and obviously google's insane because it showed me the show arrow i'm glad it didn't show me anything inappropriate I copy and paste these di uh, these arrows and, and then I'm using a squiggly arrow because the courtyard was about ventilation. So I'm gonna color that with blue, change its size, duplicate it so it looks nice and I'm gonna use the other arrow as well to emphasize the entrance and make it with bright red. And then I'm moving to diagram 3. All I'm gonna do is go to the line tool and go to the top menu and select arrow heads to start and end. And then I'm going to select its weight to be around 4 or 5. You'll have that shape which just shows that playing with the heights. And that's it. That's that diagram. Now this one is the one that's going to take a few extra minutes. I'm going to select the ground first and color that with light grey. A trick that I've been implementing is using pattern it works best with seamless textures like grass or concrete. So I'm going to select this and then use the pattern overlay with concrete and then lower its opacity and scale. This one, um, ignore that because I've decided to change it. And then I'm also gonna select all of these recession and color that with dark gray. So here I've just taken the material from Google, normal image, and then I'm slanting it because it's more interesting that way. And then copy paste it along the elevation and then just use a clipping mask to make it fit properly. I'm gonna use the transform tool by pressing Control T and then clicking on shift and control so that I can pinpoint each of the heads and then move them around. I'm gonna do it roughly first and then zoom in and actually put them on the heads of the shape. Last shape which was inspired by the Daniel Lipskin Military Museum. So I could have built that in SketchUp. It would probably take a long time so 
I'm taking a shortcut by choosing one of its pictures that match my perspective and then trying to fit that, cut it and fit it onto my perspective and then copy paste some parts of it, patch it to make the whole shape and I'm making sure that some of the lines are aligned with each other so that it doesn't look fake or patchy and then I'm gonna use the brush and to add some highlights and this clear opening of window I'm also gonna fill that with white and then using the outer glow to make it glow and I've also added the same texture on the left side changed its colors to match a bit and that's basically it for the textures. I'm gonna fill it with green to represent the grass, but you can also add texture of grass. And it's on a clipping mask, so if I paint with black, it shows the layer underneath, which is the gray, or let's say tiles. So then I'm gonna go back and make the edges a bit sharper. And then add in pathways to my building and to my entrance and my pathways are not traditional so that they're not parallel they're more like a funnel shape so that's why I'm doing them like that and then once you add your trees and people you'll have something like this and then I'm gonna color this with red because it's more like a square or an important feature on my site and then I'm gonna add my sculptures which it's literally just a normal red brush and then slanting it left to right until I get my sculptures. And I'm also just gonna add a plane in the middle of that area and that's it. That's all of the diagrams done. And that is all for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what tutorials you would like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a like and share because it helps support the channel so I can create more videos like this one. I'm Rasha Shururu and I'll see you next time.